Hello, Hello Saints. Saints. Now, my, my name is Gary. Gary. I'm, I'm a grateful, grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, welcome, welcome to Celebrate Recovery of Faith Bible Chapel. Bible Chapel. Uh, uh, we're, we're here in uh, the midst of the COVID-19 quarantine. quarantine. Um, what, what I've noticed is uh, policies regarding meetings, regarding, regarding travel, travel, and, and medical procedures, procedures are responses, at least, at least to some extent, on the opinions of experts and uh, computer models. And, and I, don't I don't know if you've noticed it, but uh, we, we rely, rely on computer, computer models and experts a lot uh, these days. Uh, the, uh, the first, first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is the 10-day uh, weather forecast. And it's really accurate for today and maybe tomorrow. But that snow that's supposed to come in four days, oftentimes in a day or two, it's out of the forecast. So these models are not perfect. What about uh, other things that we rely on? Um, the age of the universe, uh, the origins of man, a global warming. There are experts and computer models that have something to say about every one of those things. And there are experts and computer models that are on the other side of the argument in every single case. The connection with Celebrate Recovery really is this, is that we listen uh, to experts, and oftentimes we listen to voices around us, and we order our lives and the things that we do and even the things that we think and believe uh, based upon somebody else's opinion. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with the technology uh, that warns us of dangers that may come or for, from any kind of an expert who's able to better help us understand reality. I, that's all well and good, uh, but misguided opinions and uh, misstated or misdirected prophecies, well, uh, they can imprison us in our lives. And so we deal with our hurts, our habits, and our hang-ups, and a lot of times it's based upon what we've been told and what we've believed about ourselves and what we've been told and believed about God. We've been told um, what we can do what we'll be able to succeed at. We've been told what we'll never be able to do. Uh, we've been told oftentimes the things that we'll never be able to accomplish. Um, I venture to guess that every one of us has had a prophecy spoken over our life. Uh, in my life, the one that quickly comes to mind is, you'll never amount to anything. I heard that a lot as I was growing up. Um, and uh, oftentimes because of the choices that I made in life, well, um, it probably looked like that would be the case for me. Uh, but someone's opinion about your life, about your future, uh, and about your worth, well, it's just that. It's their opinion, and it's only their opinion, even if it's supported by a computer model. Oh, and by the way, um, you and I aren't perfect either, and so our opinions about ourselves, well, we need to be careful. Uh, if they don't agree with God and what He says, uh, we just shouldn't believe them, and we should quit telling ourselves uh, things that are contrary to God's Word. Only God knows all the facts, only God is perfect, and only God knows the future. Well, once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, really our past doesn't dictate our future. And why is that? And because the Bible says we're a new creation in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says the old has passed away, it's died, and the new has come. Everything is brand new, and that changes everything in the way we live. We may still sometimes make poor choices, but it's against our nature to do so. Now, before I was saved, I made a lot of bad choices, a lot of sinful choices. Frankly, most of them didn't bother me at all. But once I accepted Jesus Christ, now they bothered me. Why? Because the things that I did were contrary to my nature. They're contrary to Christ living in me, and so I had to deal with them as they came up. I couldn't bypass them like I used to. In short, we're no longer sinners. We're saints. And that's why I started the, uh, this session out by calling everybody saints. Hello, saints, because that's what we are. Once we put our confidence in Jesus, it's only God's opinion that matters. So what's God's opinion of us, of you, and of me, uh, 
according to Scripture. Well, we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21. We're seated in heavenly places with Jesus. That's Ephesians 2.6. And what about our future prospects? Now, Jesus said in Matthew 19.26, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. The uh, design uh, that God had in mind when He made you, the plans, uh, regardless of what's happened in the past, it's not impossible that God can restore and redeem your life. Uh, he's restored and redeemed mine and many others. So how do we begin to live this life in Christ? Well, first of all, we've got to lay aside the faithless prophecies that have been spoken over us by parents or step-parents, spouses or ex-spouses, teachers, coaches, judges, juries, uh, friends, uh, and even ourselves. The words of condemnation we speak daily when we stumble over that same thing again and we say, will you ever get this right? Gary, what's wrong with you, Gary? Why do you keep doing this, Gary? You know, the Bible says that out of the heart the mouth speaks, so I have to be careful of my words. They have life or they can bring death. So we have to choose to believe only what God says. And what does God say? Well, Jeremiah 29, 11, a really familiar verse, God says He has a plan for your life. It's a good plan to bring you a future and a hope. And then how do we do that? I mean, I've known forever that God has a plan for my life. I've been saved for decades. I never could figure out how to get that to work. Regardless of how hard I tried, it seemed like I always missed the plan. Well, why is that? It's simple. Philippians 1.6, He that began the good work in you will bring it to completion to the day of Jesus Christ. It's God's work. It's not our work. I never understood the verse that says, um, His yoke is easy and His burden is light. Why? Because I was always trying to carry it myself. I knew I was saved by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, but I thought after that, I'm on my own. But that's not the way it is. It's Christ living our lives, His life actually, through us. We depend on Him, not on ourselves. We let go of our self-sufficiency and let God be God. No more striving. He does it all. And why does He do it all? He does it all because we matter to Him. Knowing myself and uh, in my past, I've doubted that I'd ever really lived the life Christ designed me to live when He created me. And why was that? Because I really didn't understand God's grace, His unmerited favor. What does God say about that favor, the way that He looks at us? Romans 8.32, let me read it. He who did not spare His own Son, uh, but gave Him up for all of us, how will He not also graciously give us all things? Everything that we have, life and breath, the days of our lives when we were born, the Bible says that in the book of Esther, uh, she's told by Mordecai, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. As Christians, every one of us is born for such a time as this. God could have had us um, be born decades ago or in the future. This is the day of the Lord. And so the purposes of God in your life are gifts from God. If He's asked you and designed you to do something, He's the one that will bring you to the place where you can do it. So here we are uh, today, we're in the middle of Easter week, and we're a perfect time for those of us who maybe haven't given our lives to Jesus Christ. What a perfect time for us to admit, Lord, I've tried to do this on my own. I can't do it. I keep falling down over the same obstacles. I keep ending up in the same pits. Um, I make mistakes over and over and over again. I've sinned against you. Uh, Jesus, will you please forgive me, and I give you control of my life. And then that's the new beginning. That's the new you. For those of us who have been Christians for a while, 
And we still have hurts, habits, and hang-ups that we, simply, we don't seem to be able to get control over. Easter is the perfect time to remember that we were baptized uh, into Christ's death and were born to newness of life. It's time to rejoice and remember and recall and rehearse in our hearts and minds the Word of God about us, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that He does love us with an everlasting love, that He is our high tower, He is our shelter. We run into Him and be safe. He's the one that carries us. Well, the problem is we have a problem, and what the problem is is this. Is this. We have a hard time admitting that we need help. We have a hard time admitting that we can't do it on our own. Part of our resistance is just pride. We want to maintain that I've got it together image for everybody who sees me. But the fact is, worrying about somebody else's opinion of you really doesn't get you anywhere. Turning your life over to God is what does it. We're all broken in places, everybody, and we're broken in the places where we refuse to let Jesus in. So whatever your need and whatever your hurt and whatever your hang-up and habit, well, Jesus is the answer. He gave us His Beatitudes, and those are the steps we use in Celebrate Recovery to bring ourselves to wholeness. So my invitation today is rehearse what God says about you Forget what people say. It's His opinion that matters. And uh, I invite you to celebrate with us in Celebrate Recovery to find out who you are in Christ. So let me pray for us as we close. Now, Father, we, uh, we've been raised in a culture that um, judges us by our performance. Um, how well we do is how well we're liked. Um, the Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Help us, Lord, to uh, get that into our hearts, um, that You love us because of who we are, not because of what we do. Father, help us um, as we are on this road to perfect wholeness in Jesus Christ. And especially at this Easter season, let us rejoice in this, all that You have done for us and all that You have planned for us. And we ask it in Your holy name. Well, bless you all, and until next time, uh, grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. Thank you.